Good morning and welcome to Korea Today, live from Seoul. Pyongyang accepts Seoul's proposal to hold working level talks over reunions for separated families, but proposes another venue and adds another topic to the discussion towards Mount Kumgang. And South Korea has yet to respond to that additional topic, but in the meantime reiterated that the talks should be held at the Truce Village of Panmunjom. More coming up in the headlines. An ice age for the super rich and the middle class. More coming up on Imprint. How a balloon can help you save gas. More stories are coming up on Hot Click. Stay tuned. Being a voice for the people is why filmmaker Daesheer Kim Gibson has began creating films. The director shares her thoughts on her recent trip to North Korea and her film philosophy. A growing number of people are seeking out food and other goods prepared according to the halal ways. The ones foreign practice is slowly putting its roots down here in Korea on Monday, August 19th, 2013. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. Good Monday morning, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. You're watching Korea Today. And a happy Monday morning to you all. And now with the recent developments between Seoul and Pyongyang, focus has been turned on resuming or the resumption of the Mount Kumgang tours. Now, that they have not been in operation since 2008 when a South Korean tourist was shot and killed by a North Korean soldier. But... Uh, the case is that there are still hopes that the tours will resume and talks will resume on reopening the tours after five years of halted operations. That's right. It is a scenic mountain with pristine nature and beautiful sights to see. I was there a couple of years ago to cover a story and it's quite remarkable how unpolluted the air is in that area because there's almost no traffic in that country and best of all you get to meet with some North Koreans and uh, mingle with them and chat a little bit, albeit short and controlled. But Seoul has maintained that it needs an apology first and a guarantee that an occurrence of such incident won't happen again. So we'll have to see how Seoul reacts to Pyongyang's offer this time exactly. around. Exactly. The tour began in 1998 and it was at the peak of popularity when this incident occurs. So we'll have to see what happens. Mm. We'll begin Korea Today with a look at the day's headlines. So North Korea says yes to holding working level talks to discuss family reunions for those separated by the Korean War. The meeting will likely take place on August 23rd, but as for the venue, it still remains undecided. The Korean Red Cross working level talks will take place on August 23rd, as suggested by the South. But the venue will be changed to Mount Kungang, so the two sides can tour the site of the reunion and discuss future plans. We once again propose that the Red Cross working level talks take place at the South Korean side of Panmunjom as earlier proposed. Now, Pyongyang's response comes just three days after South Korean President Park Geun-hye, during her Liberation Day speech, proposed holding such reunions around Chuseok, one of Korea's largest national holidays in mid-September. North Korea on Sunday also proposed to hold separate talks on resuming the Mount Kumgang tourism project, which has been, as you heard, halted since 2008 after a South Korean tourist was shot dead by a North Korean guard. Seoul said it needs more time to review Pyongyang's proposal. In the meantime, South Korea and the United States are set to begin their annual Ulti Freedom Guardian exercise, exercises on this Monday. The 12-day-long computer-aided joint military drills will mobilize around 50,000 South Korean forces and roughly 30,000 American forces. The drills are intended to check the forces' ability to ensure the security on the Korean Peninsula and maintain the two allies' joint defense capabilities against North Korea. However, some experts are raising concerns that the drills may kill newly found momentum in dialogue between the two Koreas. Pyongyang has always strongly condemned the annual drills, often using it as an excuse to launch threats and rhetorics against Seoul and Washington. Boeing, with its F-15 Silent Eagle, is likely to be signing the contract of Korea's multi-billion dollar project to purchase 60 advanced fighter jets. Korea's Defense Acquisition Program Administration said Sunday that one of the two final bidders had arbitrarily altered the bid. 
When we submit the final selection evaluation to the government's Defense Acquisition Committee, only the companies with proposals that are within the given budget will be eligible for recommendation. The more than $7 billion bid was narrowed to a two-way race between Boeing's F-15SCs and EADS's Eurofighter Typhoon jets last week. But insiders say the EADS has been disqualified after changing the mutually agreed conditions of meeting a total of 60 jets. The final decision will be made in next month's committee meeting, presided over by Defense Minister Kim Guan jin Prosecutors are continuing their search to locate the missing 2007 inter-Korean summit transcript. The search, which began last Friday, went on over the weekend and will continue on Monday as well. The prosecution, which originally estimated the total duration of the search to be 30 to 40 days, is now saying it will likely take more time because of the complex system of keeping presidential records and also because of the time it takes to decode them. The missing transcript has been in the spotlight in the political arena after the two main rival political parties butted heads over accusations that late liberal president Noh Mui-hyun tried to nullify the de facto maritime inter-Korean border in the West Sea during the 2007 summit. Good morning, everyone. Today we have a wide range of topics covered by our newspapers from a foreseeable positive shift in relations between the two Koreas to some news on the economy as well. Let's go ahead and start things off with our first newspaper of the day, Tonga Ilbo. Now the text headline here reads, May 24th measure halting inter-Korean exchange to be lifted. Now, to give you a bit of a background, May 24th measure refers to a bundle of sanctions against North Korea by former President Lee Myung-bak that came in the wake of North Korea's 2010 attacks on South Korean naval ship Cheonan as well as Yeongpyeong Island. The sanctions included a complete ban of inter-Korean trade, investment, as well as South Korea's aid programs for the North. Citing an unnamed government source, the Daily says, South and North Korean authorities will engage in talks to withdraw the May 24th measures. Another government source said, according to the Daily, that the government will not officially announce the withdrawal of the measures yet, but since the two Koreas agreed to internationalize the Kaesong Industrial Complex last Wednesday, the process to lift the sanctions is underway. Now let's take a look at this picture right under. Um, this is at Injingak Pyeongha Nuri Park near the border village of Panmunjom. And you can see here a foreigner taking up photos of these ribbons. These ribbons carry messages left by visitors who made wishes for reunification of the two Koreas. The text under it reads, uh, after North Korea accepted South Korea's offer to hold working level talks on resuming uh, reunions of families separated from the Korean War, hopes for family reunions on the rise. Now let's move on over to our Joseon Ilbo and go directly by taking a look at this picture right here. The caption right under reads, Japan's Sakurajima volcano erupts. The highest smoke has ever reached at five kilometers. The Sakurajima volcano, which is located four kilometers away from Kyushu city of Kagoshima, erupted at 4.31 p.m. yesterday and recorded smoke that hit up to 5,000 meters in height. Now, that was the volcano's highest smoke level since records began back in 1955. You can barely see the city of Kagoshima here with the, uh, with the ash heavily spread across it. Now let's take a look at this headline right here. It reads, middle class in debt, 1.25 million households doubles in 20 years. So the paper says the proportion of middle class households in cities with two or more family members that are in debt jumped from about 12% to 19% in 20 years, according to Statistics Korea. But high income earners, in contrast, saw their level of deficit actually decrease in the same period from 10% to 6%. That shows, the paper says, a rise in income gap between the high and middle income earners. The paper also cites a researcher from Hyundai Research Institute who said as high income earners continue to make more money, the middle class is becoming increasingly frustrated from the sense that they cannot catch up. Now let's scoot on over to our next newspaper, Chungang Ilbo. 
Now, the text headline here reads, both top 1% rich and middle class freeze on consumption. The paper says because of the rise in household debt, not a lot of people are spending, even including those in the top 1% income bracket. Korea's income to debt ratio stands at 164%, which is much higher than Japan's 132% and the United States' 120%. If you take a look at this graph right here, it shows the level of spending by B VIP customers at a department store. Ever since the second quarter of 2011, it's been on a sharp decline, an example of the rich spending less. Now, the graph right under it shows um, declining sales at a popular family restaurant ever since the last quarter of 2012, which the paper uses to show the falling consumption level by the middle class. Let's finally go on over to our economic news of the day, uh, mail business. The headline here reads, it's easy, 50s and 70s, always on smartphones. Now, the paper talks about the rising number of elderly that are using smartphones here in Korea, adding they're no longer used exclusively by the younger generation. If you take a look at this bar graph right here, which has data from the Korea Internet and Security Agency, it divides the growth of wireless internet usage by age group. And as you can see here, wireless internet use grew by the biggest margin for those in in their 50s by over 20 percent and of course not surprisingly those in their 20s followed by 18 percent uh, now this according to the daily has given rise to the term silver mobilian the term silver coming from the silver generation and mobilian referring to smartphone users the silver mobilian are the paper says used to characterize the financially well-off older generation who actively use the smartphones or tablet pcs we will leave it at you. We will leave it at that for you. Look on today's imprint. Next up are your closing numbers from Friday's market action. It looks like we're off to a hazy morning. Uh, Look at this. You can see right behind us. Right. Not looking that good right now. Yeah, see anything. <laughs> and we're expecting some rain today, which hopefully will cool things off for us. Yep, but we are expecting a break in the heat. I'm not sure how much of a break because it's still hot to me. We'll get a check on the weather with E. Dami. Dami, good morning. Good morning, Dami. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm reporting live from a village called Togongli, located in Yangpyeong of Gyeonggi Province. Now, um, I have some good news in the weather forecast for this week. What seemed like a never-ending heat wave has finally snapped, and in most areas of the central regions, we will be seeing cooler temperatures. Now, uh, heat wave alerts have been lifted from most areas of the central regions. This morning, we are seeing temperatures at about 26 degrees Celsius, but it does feel a lot nicer because there is a cool breeze uh, blowing here and there. And right now we are seeing mostly cloudy skies as there are signs of sporadic showers in the central regions, but conditions will clear up by the afternoon. As for down south, it looks like the heat wave is ongoing and the afternoons will look pretty hot. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the temperatures around the nation. Over in Seoul, highs will reach to 32, Tejin will look similar. Tegu will continue to be scorching hot at 36, as Gangneung looks the coolest at 30. And down in Jeju, highs will rise to 34 degrees. Now tomorrow, most of the nation will be seeing partly cloudy skies, as down south there are signs of shower in the weather forecast for tomorrow. That's all I have for now. I'll be back in the latter half. As you could see, with the recent developments involving North Korea, the communist country remains a big enigma. But a Korean-American filmmaker who hails from North Korea aims to shed more light on our birth country and the people of that country. 
with her new documentary. Now, the director was born in Hwangedo, North Korea, and she fled to South Korea during the Korean War. She went to, she went to university here and in her 20s uh, went to the United States as an international student and started her directing career at the age of 50 in an effort to shed light on the alienated. Let's take a look at her story right now. There are many different documentaries with endless topics. For filmmaker Tashir Kim Gibson, its specific people or groups that interest her, and that's why she's always on the move to find her next subjects. <laughs> Kim decided to take the path of a filmmaker because she wanted to tell the stories of people who have been alienated and hurt from society. And through her films, she was able to introduce to the public issues that have been neglected. The director fled North Korea with her family at the age of seven. And she's back in her home country almost after 70 years to film her newest documentary about the two Koreas. <laughs> I've been making films for a quarter century, and if there was one film that I wanted to make was to make a film about the Korean Peninsula, which includes now known as North Korea and South Korea, in the way that is fair, accurate, and correct. I'm 75 years old, which means that I have longer past than any future that I can have. So I thought before I die, I will tell the story of the Korean Peninsula using my life as a narrative arc. On July 27th, which marks the signing of the Korean War Armistice Agreement, Kim met and spoke with many North Koreans to understand their normal, everyday stories, as opposed to the often discussed North Korean leadership and politics. <laughs> what I wanted to see most in North Korea were ordinary people. The children were great. All the people were also full of humor, and they all sang. Of course, they have lots of restrictions, but their spirit is alive. I am hopeful, personally speaking, about that country because of the Inmin's spirit, which is strong, alive, and proud, and those children. For the past 25 years, filmmaker Kim has produced several documentaries. Tsai Gu outlines the stories of the Korean-American victims and communities that were affected by the Los Angeles riots. Forgotten People, the Sakhalin Koreans, deals with the lives of the elderly Sakhalin Koreans. And Silence Broken, Korean Comfort Women, features the heartfelt stories of the Korean victims of forced military sexual slavery. So why does director Kim continue to look for stories of people alienated by society? Actually, one of the women says, the reason why I survived was because I wanted to be alive, come back to my motherland, and tell our people and our government and the world what Japan did to us. That was the reason why I could survive. So I wanted to tell. And in the beginning, I used to say, I'm giving voices to the voiceless. That was wrong, too. I was not giving voices to the voiceless. They were the ones who gave me voice. So once I start making those films, once I listened to them, they are the ones who gave me voice to go and make another film like that. There's only one reason she focuses on bringing attention to the untold stories of marginalized people. It's because she believes they are the most important people who can make our present and future a better place. What do you think made my hair this gray? It's the struggle. I struggled, struggled, struggled. As you know, nothing good comes easily in life. 
but the power that sustains that difficulty is also the joy that comes from making films. And uh, the greatest joy I felt every time when I made films is when I could hear the voices of those people or issues about which, about whom I make films. Director Kim believes it's extremely crucial to be a good listener in order to retell the stories of others. And that's why she continues to search for and listen to other stories. It is very difficult to make serious films, but one thing I know is the audience, regardless what race, there are more people who like to learn about these real issues, serious issues. If you really want it to be a good filmmaker, it's not giving what you think they like, but you think, what you think, challenge their minds and hearts and the entire being. is quite an inspiration mm -hmm. and director Kim has finished filming here in Korea and here in South Korea and also in North Korea she is now back in the US and she's working on the latter part of our documentary I'm really looking forward to this one now the director received recognition in the United States after releasing an independent film about forced wartime sexual slavery and in fact it was this film that the US Congress watched and then made their decision on passing a resolution about the sex slave issue and to add on to that that eight of her films have been aired on PBS in the U.S. Mm, what a life she has led, right? I mean, mm. last year, the New York Museum of Modern Art has screened her film, Silence Broken, and currently all her documentaries are kept in the U.S. Library of Cong Congress for scholars, and they're easily available for anyone who wants to check them out, right? Mm. All right, still ahead on Korea Today, we are going to be talking about halal and what exactly is it? Find out because Audrey Young will be joining us for that. Now, in Arabic, it means permitted or lawful and it refers to food prepared according to the halal ways. It was once foreign and difficult to find. Halal foods are catching on with more Koreans and with this comes an increase in eateries and products. That's all on Korea Today. Good morning, I'm Jeon Sung Cho, and I'll fill you in on the latest with the hot clicks. And many were surprised when they found that a U.S. billboard published an article recently saying that a new K-pop sensation has been born following Psy's viral Gangnam style. So who can this sensation possibly be? Billboard's K-pop columnist Jeff Benjamin named the Korean girl group Crayon Pop as the next big smash following the footsteps of Psy. As Crayon Pop's song Ba 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 is sweeping major domestic music charts and sites, similar to Sai's Gangnam style, many are mimicking and coming out with different spoofs of the girl group's catchy tune. What viewers find most entertaining is a dance called the Straight Five Engine Dance, as it looks like the five girls are moving up and down like engine cylinders. We'll look forward to Crayon Pop's domestic and international success closely following the increased opportunities created by Sai. And take a look at these pictures and guess what they're made up of. Uh, recently, pictures titled Supermarket Display Art were featured on an online community message board and received a lot of attention from cyber users. Well, if you look uh, closely at this art piece, which looks like a red robot, you'll notice it is actually made up of snack boxes connected and glued together. And look at this one too. Uh, this gigantic, beautiful bird is also created with snack packaging. And so is the food it's tightly holding with its feet. And it looks like there are competitions held for such display art items in different countries around the globe, so it's definitely something that will make your regular trip to supermarkets extra fun. Now let's move on to our next story. Uh, on Korea's National Liberation Day last week, a picture and message titled Korean Flag Made by Bulgarian Students was uploaded on a portal site, receiving a lot of positive feedback. The message and picture of students making a Korean flag to celebrate the country's National Liberation Day was put up by a Korean language instructor at an international school located in Sofia, Bulgaria. 
this school was the first academic institution in Europe to officially enroll Korean language course. And currently, out of all the other foreign language classes, including Arabic, Japanese, and Chinese, Korean is the most competitive one to enter, with many top-ranking students wanting to apply. Now this picture that I'm about to show you is creating a huge buzz on Facebook with its touching story behind it. And it's not a very clear photo right here, but you can see there's a police officer and behind him there's an elderly woman. And according to the student who took this picture, the police officer was putting all the snacks the grandmother was selling on the street into a plastic bag. And at first he thought that the, the officer was trying to stop the woman from selling on the road, but it turned out the weather was scorching hot on that day and the officer, worried about her health, bought everything she was selling so that she could go home and get some rest. Now you know why more than 150,000 people click like on this picture in just the span of one day. And now our last story of the day. A campaign started by an oil company recently caught a lot of people's attention. When trying to park our cars in a, parking, in a big parking lot, we often have to circle around the entire place several times to get an empty spot. And if we think about it, we waste a lot of gas doing this. In this situation, wouldn't it be useful if there's a sign of some kind indicating an empty spot? And in this campaign called Here, they're using a balloon as a sign. It's a great idea since it's eye-catching and it not only saves gas and time, but also runs power-free, completely eco-friendly. And this campaign is being praised by many online users, featured as a small but brilliant idea that could make this world a better place. That is a very sweet idea, but it's kind of ironic that an oil company is coming up with an idea to save more gas. You know, it's You're in their right. best interest to sell more. But anyhow, we hope more, more oil companies will follow suit. Um, but speaking of bright ideas, do you have any that uh, might uh, help save the planet or maybe <laughs> on the way to it? Yeah, to save the planet, to uh, talking about great ideas, I'll show you a couple of more interesting ones that I found on the internet. And uh, so you all have business cards, right? And instead of handing out paper business cards, you can save trees by just having a stamp card so you can stamp it on when, wherever the other person wants it. And also we often uh, leave the tap water running when we wash our hands so as a reminder and an encouragement to conserve water you can put a fish tank in front of you with goldfish in it so you can watch the water level drop while watching, <laughs> washing your hands. And, and I'm sure unless you're heartless you wouldn't want to, uh, the goldfish to die, right? You're not washing your hands with that water though, right? They're no, like, you're no. not. <laughs> and here's my card, Young. There goes the stamp. Yeah. There you go, I got it. I'll save this for later. But these are really your ideas, These are huh? some Nobel Prize winning ideas ideas. Mm -hmm. quite interesting. For I know, sure. visual impact, and it can make a huge difference. And I'm sure all of these uh, innovative ideas will, um, and inventions are, inventions are what motivate more people to come up with the next uh, great ideas. And before I leave, I want to end Hot Clicks today with this video by Korea marketing uh, expert and Professor Seo Gyeong Dog. The video is titled, Japanese Sex Slaves, uploaded on YouTube on National Liberation Day last week. Professor Seo is also planning to create more of these videos titled, History Koreans Should Know, which will cover other historical issues. So this is all I have for you today on Hot Clicks. I'll see you next week.
The Asian University for Women was established in Chittagong, Bangladesh in 2008. Sherry Blair is currently the chancellor of this university, which offers unique opportunities to its students. And joining us this morning are three students from this university, Momita Bazak, Hello. Afroza Alom, Hello. and Nisha Tlaihana. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Now, how did you come to apply for this university and what impact has it made in your life so far? In the beginning, we really had difficulty because it's the first time right. they are starting this university with bringing students from so many different countries. And students like me who had barely no knowledge of uh, English, like we could not speak a word of English in the beginning, how will I survive and whether what sort of opportunity uh, it will provide later, how, how is the education, we did not have much idea of it. So even if I got accepted to other universities, I preferred uh, Asian University for women over other universities because I felt this university is providing a quality education that um, uh, for women especially for women because and it's unique in overall South Asia because women university bringing students from so many different countries is very diverse in in terms of cultures so I felt like this university that's why I picked this university mm. for my education because I'm uh, because of my uh, my financial um, background and everything mm -hmm. I cannot afford to have education abroad mm. but the, I'm getting I got full scholarship as well as this quality education both together it's rare so oh, I wow. picked this university University. You seem very excited about the <laughs> university. Yes, okay, I am. Um, let me ask this question to Nishat, uh, guide, guide the question towards your way. Now, the internship is at uh, the Export Import Bank of Korea. Tell us a little bit about this internship. Like, uh, the internship as program is related to the EDCF program. Like, uh, Korea is one of the donor country, that is, and Bangladesh is one of the largest recipient country. And they are doing projects with the EDCF, so they are just lending money to the Bangladesh and as well as giving suggestions how to Bangladesh can be more developed. So I'm personally engaged with the Indonesia and the Pacific Ocean project, where I'm doing, like, the, the, making the report, uh, learning, reading lots of articles about the loan agreement, loan disbursement, how the appraisal mission is going on so I'm just learning on that and as well as I'm writing report I'm um, making the summarize of their missions uh, checking the loan adverse uh, disbursement procedure all these things all right yes. enough about work let's talk about something <laughs> more relaxing how are you enjoying life in Korea this new culture of oh it's the, like first time that I'm in here and actually the first time that I'm in abroad also so first time that I at the beginning, I thought that maybe it will be difficult. But once I come here, I feel that no, it's not difficult at all. The people here, oh my God, they're so good and their attitude, they're so polite. Even like in my working place, the, all the people, my colleagues, all of them are so friendly and they're helping us a lot. Okay. Even in outside, when we go, if we face any kind of problem, they just try to help us. Like even though sometimes there is a difficulty for the language, but still, sometimes we try to make them understand with our body language, mm. or sometimes we know a little bit like Korean language. So with those all kind of things that we, sometimes we make them understand, and they are really eager to help us a lot. Mm. And the food, oh my God, it's so nice. It's so tasty. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, back to a difficult question. You guys, you girls, all come from Bangladesh, yeah. and I lived in Bangladesh in the 1990s. Oh, really? And oh. I know education is a luxury that many women can't mm. afford in the country. Now, have things changed in that country, in your country? Actually, mm. day by day, it's changing. Like government is doing like so many uh, like subsidy for the education and also for the girls education like even if you think about the primary education the like girls are getting but the situation of the picture is different when you see the higher education like most of the girls they become dropped out from the university or they are I mean uh, higher uh, I mean uh, uh, secondary like when they are in the university or higher level education so this is the most difficult part when the girls is getting their higher education. And especially mm. if you think about the village side and the city side, mm. this is also, you can see the different kind of picture. Mm. In city side, the girls, like, yeah, sometimes they have opportunity to go, but in village side, it's very, very difficult. Even mm. sometimes their own family want, but the society, sometimes because of the society's pressure, sometimes they cannot. Mm. 
Yeah, so, and there are social, uh, many social stigma related to it, related to like girls going outside. Mm -hmm. So there are so many other problems. So Asian University for Women, it's not only our university. I felt like it's not only providing the education for the under from this underprivileged background to women, also from many different backgrounds, from many different social strata we are gathering together. We are not in anymore stick to those norms. We are mm -hmm. we are going abroad, right, like here, be being exposed to different culture. It's actually broaden up our mind in many ways. So I feel like university like ours need to be established more and more <laughs> in our sure, country. Yes. Yes. And yeah. many women around the world mm. you know, go through a lot to get yeah. educated and some mm. even risk their lives mm. trying to get educated. And as someone who's had this opportunity, this golden opportunity to be educated, what do you have to say about women and the importance of education, Nishana? Well, I, um, I want to say that we become the role model for our family, for our society, actually. I see many of my friends who are getting married right after their high secondary education or during their studying in the universities. They are facing so many problems because they don't have that much education. They can't earn more. They can't contribute to their family. And still, Bangladesh is a patriarchal society. So the thing is that women's education is not getting, though it's getting priority, but the problem is our society, social norms, social stigma, as uh, Momita said that. So all this problem becomes a barrier for them. But the, we are the students who are not working, not only focus on our education, we always engage ourselves in the community service. Mm -hmm. We all the time, our university students try to do something that will be make benefits to the society. society. Mm -hmm. We work for the street children. We give education to the slum area students. So all the times we are engaging and just people, they are just checking, take, uh, they just see us that, yeah, these girls are doing something different from the, these girls. So they are becoming a role model for us. Mm, you ladies are so bright <laughs> that I think future is bright. And I think I, think I just got taught a lesson over here. The, the world. Thank you, uh, ladies, for coming in to talk to us this and morning. Thank you very thank much you for very inviting nice us in your show. Yeah. Yes. Nice to be here. All right, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Um, enjoy the rest of your stay here and also um, the internship. We hope uh, it all works out well. Okay, yeah. right. thank, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. And a good Monday morning to you all, and what a way to kick off the new week then. Talk about Sonia and Jan are continued success in rhythmic gymnastics. Now, of course, with the last World Cup event of the season taking place in Russia, the 19-year-old went after a fifth straight medal finish. And what do you know, a fifth straight medal finish is what she got after scoring 17.600 in the hoop event, finishing second overall for a silver medal in the event. Now she also scored 17.950 in the ball event, 17.833 in clubs event, and 17.700 in ribbon, scoring a total of 71.083. Now the overall score was good for fourth place overall in the total scoring as she was just short by 0.049 points, which would have given her a bronze medal finish. Now the silver medal finish also gives her a total of six medals in the five World Cup events this season. What was the return we were all waiting for? The return of Captain Park, Park Ji Sung. Now with PSV Eindhoven taking on the go-ahead Eagles, the South Korean was left off the roster due to his injury. Now while many did speculate that the 32-year-old would make his debut coming off the bench, he was eventually left off the roster because of his injury. Despite Park Ji Sung being left off the game, PSV cruised past the go-ahead Eagles thanks to the young talents on the team as he took this match 3-0. Now, experts believe that Park Ji-sung's debut will come during the Champions League playoff when PSV is set to face off against AC Milan. And now staying in football, but back here in the nation, there were four K-League Classic matches that took place on Sunday as the Poang Steelers and Gyeongnam FC drew 0-0 as Poang remained in first place with the draw. Also, the Ursan Hyundai Tigers were three points behind Poang going into their match against Busan, lost 1-0 as they're now four points behind the league leaders. Meanwhile, Incheon United snuck in a win against the lowly Kangwon FC, beating them 2-1 thanks to two late goals from Diogo and Nam Jun Jae. Of course, lastly, Cheju United and Daegu FC drew 1-1, both goals coming in in the second half of the game. 
Of course, with that said, moving on to some Sunday night KBO action as the SK Wyverns avoid the sweep against the Tucson Bears as they shut out the Tucson Bears 9 to nothing. Also, the NC Dinos and the Lotte Giants, after 12 innings of play, they drew 6 to 6 as the NC Dinos continue to impress all the fans out there with their scrappy baseball. So, with that said, moving on to the other two games, the red hot LG Twins took on the struggling Kia Tigers. So, let's take a look at the highlights. Of course, taking a look at the game, here we go over to the second inning of the game. Chung Sung Hoon RBI single to right as the LG Twins take an early 1 0 lead. Next inning, Lee Jun Ho sends one to center field. A sack fly here ties the ball game one to one. Sixth inning of the game. Here come the Twins. Bases loaded. Walk scores. Lee Byung Gyu as LG takes the lead two to one. Next play, Supersonic. Lee Dae Hyung grounds out to second. This scores another run for the LG Twins. Then comes the third run of the inning. A wild pitch scores another as the LG Twins take the 4-1 lead. Now we're going to shift over to the bottom of the inning in this game. Shin jong gi singles in a run here. The deficit cut. 4-2 LG Twins. Shifting over to the eighth inning of the game. Kia lighting it up. Shin jong gi once again. This time a two-run double to right. And the game's tied 4-4. Next play of the game, An Chi Hong, RBI single to left, and Kia takes the lead 5 to 4. But we're not done yet. Next batter, Chai Irmo, two run double to left field here, completing a five run eighth inning as the Kia Tigers rally back to take this game 7 to 4. Of course, with the win, Kia snaps their five game losing streak. And now next up, these Samsung Lions taking on the Nexon Eros. Second inning, Kim Tae-wan sack fly scores the first run of the game as Samsung takes the lead one to nothing. Next inning, Nexon's Munuram RBI single to left field here, and the game is tied 1-1. We're not done yet. Lee Tae-kun this time two-run double to deep left field as Nexon takes a 3-1 lead before last year's MVP Park Bang Park Byung Ho makes it 4-1 with an RBI single. Shifting to the fourth inning, next is Yuhan Jun deep to left field, and it is out of here. Five to one, next in. Same inning, bottom of the inning this time, it's Park Sung Min. This time a two run shot to deep left field. This one is gone as well. Cut the deficit five to three. Ninth inning, Samsung threatening with Pei Sub's RBI single here, cutting the deficit to five for Nexon. But next batter, Chung Hyung Shik at bat, he's gonna ground this one to four, six, Three in time, double play, ball game over. Nexon holds on to take this game five to four as Nexon avoids the two game sweep. All right, staying in baseball, but over in the majors, LA Dodgers, after spending the hundreds and hundreds of million dollars this past offseason, didn't start off too well. In fact, manager Don Mattingly was even rumored to be fired as well. But after that, the Dodgers came alive as they won 42 games in the last 50 games as of Saturday. That's the best run a team has gone in the majors since the 1942 St. Louis Cardinals went 41 and 7. So with all that said, that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Another hot day today. We can hang out at the Marupa Square. Right, the water slide looks yeah. like a lot of fun, although we're too big for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're now going to check back in with our Dami, or I should say Dami the fisherman. Right? Yep, yep. Um, she's going uh, minnow fishing. We'll see what uh, she has in store for us. <laughs> Over to you, Dami. Hi, 
Alright, so I'm back reporting live from a small village which is the entrance of Yangkyang, Gyeonggi province called Dogongni. Now here in the village, it's home to about 50 households, so about 150 residents. So like I said, it is quite a small village, but in the summertime, there are a lot of people that visit here because you can experience farming and of course fishing. Now after the monsoon season, they say that there are a lot of different fish that you can catch, but in the summertime, minnows are the most common. So I'm here to go minnow fishing. And to help me out is this tool right here. It's called a chokde. Now, as you can see, there's two bamboo sticks that are connected with this fishnet. And what you do is you kind of place it right here in the stream and you kind of wait until the fish come into your net. But as you can see, I'm not really doing a good job. So let's go ahead and go down there and see if um, some of the people here at Dogongni are catching any fish. Alright, so let's go ahead and see if there are any minnows in his chokde. All right, let's go ahead and see. It. Oh, look at them flapping. Yeah, you can see that live minnow right there. All right, so obviously I'm still a beginner, so I still have a lot to work on. Now, um, this is just, it's so much fun trying this out because it's not something that's very common that you can do here um, over in Seoul. So why not come on over with your loved ones and experience this at the village called Togongni. Uh, and that's all I have for today. I'm Idami, Korea Today. like five fish. Yeah, yeah. that's not, not bad. Fair, it? You have to use the old fishing rod in the, in the string there. Now, um, we're going to be talking today on our uh, segment about halal, which refers to a specific way of preparing certain goods. And to talk more about that, Audrey Young joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Yes, today I'll be talking about Muslims halal. Um, as Korea is geographically located far away from many Islamic countries, it's true that the religion um, was was unfamiliar to many Koreans um, but recently things have been changing and people are becoming more accustomed to Islam and the practice of some of the Islamic practices and one of them is halal so let's check out what things are changing in Seoul there's Korea's little Islam located on Itaewon's Islam Hill and here there's one thing that's very unique it's that most of these places have halal certifications displayed. From the outside, this restaurant looks like any other. This is because halal isn't something that's visible. Oh, that looks good. That looks fabulous. Wow. Oof. For Muslims, halal means food that is permissible to eat and it's a religious code they must follow. It's easier to come by halal food as many halal restaurants have opened. We come here often since the food is just like what we can get in Islamic countries. Halal literally means things allowed. And in Islam, besides food, anything that's permitted under the religion's commandment is also called halal. But in Korea, halal food has become broader in meaning. Many think of this as natural or good for your health. Huh, interesting. Huh. Those are halal certified. Yes. This is because halal ingredients are known to have been slaughtered in clean, strict environments. I'm at a halal bakery in Itaewon, and today I'll be making a special halal sweet. Come join me. I'm good. This looks really good. One unique characteristic of halal bread is that there's almost Can I try no this? meat. Yeah, of course. Just this is delicious. Oh, yeah, Can I try making this today? Bakery, course, yeah. Take it's some food. Be, yeah. It's okay, he offered it to me. <laughs> and I tried making it. It's just big size. Okay. Do I need to put flour on it? Okay. No? Like this? 
like this. Okay. <laughs> so right now I'm making a halal sweet. Yes. What's the difference between a halal sweet and just a, any other sweets that yeah. other bakeries make? Uh, we are using only the butter, for example, all this butter halal, no have any difference since the pork. If okay. something the pork is not a Muslim for Muslim, never. <laughs> That is an all. Instead of meat, Honey, fresh alternative okay, ingredients like pearl. fruits and nuts are added no, to the bread. Wow. Wow. That wow. looks good. good. That looks amazing. Yeah. And that's honey. So there we have it. This is my very own halal sweet water butt lol. Some kind of a halal sauce, <laughs> I would imagine. There are 135,000 Muslims living in Korea and the number continues to grow. But until recently, it was hard for Muslims here to follow the rules of halal. But it looks like more people are accepting and understanding different cultures. I'm glad to see that other Muslim students like me are able to eat religiously approved food here in Korea. This is a Korean cuisine research lab, and here researchers are trying to create a mid-ground between Korean and halal foods. This laboratory is working to get halal certificates for different Korean foods in order to expand the domestic food market to Muslim and Islamic countries. After detailed surveys, we found out that Muslims identified kimchi as a staple and representative Korean dish. And that's why we're doing a lot of research on kimchi. The boom in Islamic countries has also helped women be more involved in economic activities to cater to working with Muslim women Various halal cosmetics are out like this halal certified rose hip fruit in most products. Since these beauty products have been recognized as natural cosmetics, Muslim and Korean women are expressing their likes for them. I heard the products here are clean and don't have side effects on the skin. The trend is that halal certifications are now being acknowledged as a well-being certificate in Korea. The once unfamiliar and foreign halal is starting to gradually carve out a spot in Korean culture. And you've brought some halal treats for yes. us to enjoy. Yes. Let's see. Are these the very ones that you made? Yes, these are the ones that I made. They didn't right. turn out as well as probably what the baker would have done. <laughs> it doesn't have right, which uh, one do you recommend? I recommend sauce. you trying the one that I made, which Ooh. is what about laws, the triangular shaped one. Young, go ahead. That's too big for my mouth. <laughs> right, I'm yeah, just going to take a tiny one. one. I, okay, I wash my hands. You. Thank you. It looks don't good. Worry. It has you. nuts <laughs> and fruits, dried fruits in exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah? So what I did was... Mm. Mm. How is it? Good. Good? All right. Mm. That took nine layers of dough, rolling out that dough just to make that crunchy oh, wow. and flaky outside, the pastry on the outside. Oh, this is mm. super good. It's good, right? And the nuts inside are almonds mixed with butter. That's halal. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, wow. I'm not sure if I can have any more. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you can go for a run later. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about the cosmetics, though. I didn't really quite understand the concept. Well, the eco-friendly trend that's taking Korea by storm is actually, it goes well in line with halal. Um, so that's why many environmental environmentally friendly Korean companies are now trying to move in to enter into the halal market. Hmm. Mm, okay, well speaking of the um, halal market, according mm -hmm. to um, the reports that I saw on The Economist, um, the halal market is increasing by 20% each year. Now, um, these certifications are important for companies if they want to try to get in there into the halal market. Mm -hmm. Is there a um, special company or an organization that provides these certifications? Yes, the most recognized enterprise is Malaysia's Jakim. Jakim, and I'm going to tell you what it stands for. It's Jab Jabatan Kemajuan Islam Malaysia. I hope I had that right for all mm. the Malaysians out there. And according to a survey, um, about 60%, uh, as 60% of Malaysians are Muslims, mm -hmm. um, most Malaysians choose to purchase halal certified by Jakim um, items instead of ones that are not certified. So it's a very important certification. And recently, the Korean Muslim Federation has won this uh, right to give out halal That's certifications, right. right? Yes. So Malaysia's Jakim has actually 
given the green light to Korea Muslim Federation so that they can mark and give out this certification uh, domestically in Korea. And as we know that, you know, the process of licensing and receiving certification, um, it's a very tedious process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from the paperwork all the way to factory inspections. So it's true that it's gotten a lot much easier um, mm. now that we can actually have these halal certified um, certifications issued right here in Korea. Okay. Mm. And in, in Korea as well, you see a lot of, a lot of the uh, Muslim populations. Um, before in the past, there, there weren't that many businesses associated with um, Islam or, mm. or Muslim restaurants uh, for that matter. But now it's all available so they're able right. to get all the food and everything that they right. need. I'm happy that I can take my Muslim friends who are visiting Korea right. to these restaurants. Mm -hmm without having to worry about the food that is uh, in the dishes. Yeah, right? for now, I'm glad that you brought the dishes to us. <laughs> I'm enjoying that. Thank you for your report. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the end of this edition of Korea Today. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 7 a.m. Thanks a good for day. watching. Bye-bye.